And we have some breaking news out of the NFL where Jim Brown, one of the greatest players in football history, has died at the age of 87. The former Browns fullback was a three-time MVP and was a nine-time Pro Bowler. Brown has his number retired by both Syracuse and the Cleveland Browns and was a part of the NFL's 100th anniversary team. Along with his work on the field, Brown was also a prominent civil rights advocate during the 1960s. And we have our senior NFL insider Jonathan Jones joining us here on HQ to talk more about Jim Brown. JJ, Jim Brown, a remarkable man on and off the field. But when you think of him on the field, what is the first thing that comes to mind? I mean, GOAT, <laughs> certainly greatest of all time when you talk about at the running back position. I think there are a lot of football experts out there uh, who would label him and describe him as the GOAT regardless of position. Certainly, uh, he's on anyone's top five, top four, top three, right? I mean, we're talking about uh, Tom Brady at the quarterback position, Jerry Rice at wide receiver, Lawrence Taylor uh, on defense, and obviously Jim Brown at the running back position. It's a guy who in, you know, nine seasons with plenty left in the tank, set the NFL's all-time uh, career rushing yards uh, mark that wasn't beaten for another two decades by Walter Payton. I mean, he is still today, I think, 11th all time in rushing yards for someone who didn't even get double digit seasons. And so uh, obviously uh, someone who was able to take the Cleveland Browns to incredible heights, uh, someone who was able to uh, gain 5.2 yards per carry in the NFL. That five yards per carry is really a benchmark. Uh, that we have carried on throughout the NFL. A lot of ebbs and flows, a lot of changes to the game, obviously. We're in a pass-happy league right now, but still, that is the benchmark, and Jim Brown uh, set it and then surpassed it. We see right there the career rushing yards per game. Uh, and the fact is, if he didn't retire after his ninth season when he was also uh, you know, a Hollywood movie star, uh, he probably would have... Uh, had the career rushing yards record for another couple decades until Emmitt Smith ultimately would have uh, broken it. So uh, a game changer, a guy who I hear all the time Bill Belichick talks about as uh, a goat of this uh, football league, someone who when the, the Patriots played the Browns recently, he actually made a field trip, had the bus stop and go check out the Jim Brown statue and really kind of give the players a history lesson about who he was on and off the field. So certainly a legend in Cleveland, a legend for uh, the NFL uh, who sadly lost at 87. Yeah, we showed those stats there. JJ, the only player in NFL history to average 100 plus rushing yards per game. And you talked about where he ranks as far as the top backs ever. Some people's three, four, five. But to this day, JJ, some people regard him as the greatest NFL player ever. In your opinion, where do you think he stacks up? Yeah, I mean, look, we're in a rings culture right now. And so you talk about the quarterback position being the most important in all of uh, North American sports. And you look at Tom Brady uh, and how he's been able to capture more uh, Lombardis than any franchise uh, in NFL history. And so he has certainly a great argument there. Uh, Jerry Rice obviously has a fantastic argument. But uh, I think the best argument for Jim Brown is that uh, his peak – lasted for a really long time, right? Three times uh, the AP MVP, uh, a guy who uh, every year he was the best player at his position for a decade. And it also wasn't close. That's really where we get into this GOAT discussion. I think we need to look at era and compare who was number one and then how far was the gap between number one and number two. So, for example, Tom Brady, number one quarterback. But Peyton Manning, for example, really, really good. And if you have him at number two, there's not a huge gap between Tom Brady and Peyton Manning, certainly in rings, but not uh, in sort of success on the field. You have Jim Brown at number one, and whoever is at number two is way down there. There's a huge delta. And so I think when you view it through that lens, okay, you played this position, but who could play the position if you didn't uh, exist in this football world? Who could play it? Uh, you know, who would be number one? And there's no one close 
to Jim Brown. And then you can only imagine what he would have done if he hung in the game for another three, four, five years, how he could have really set those records very, very far out. So if you have him as your number one greatest football player of all time, I certainly understand that there's an argument for that. And JJ, of course, we've talked about a lot of his accolades on the field, but what he was not only a Hall of Fame running back, he was a noted civil rights activist. You talked about his acting career as well. Can you speak to just his overall legacy? You know, back in, in the 60s, it was not very common for black athletes to become movie stars. And if they did become movie stars, they normally did not become movie stars while they were also standing up uh, for civil rights. It was incredibly rare. We're talking about a unicorn, Jim Brown. We're talking about a guy, again, greatest of all time, at least at the running back position, potentially in football. We're also talking about a guy who is in the lacrosse hall of fame, who if football wasn't around, he could have been one of the best lacrosse players the world's ever seen. And then he, does the movie thing. But while he's also doing the movie thing, he's also making sure uh, that he's looking out for his people at a very, very important time in this country's history. And so I think back to uh, the Cleveland summit that he helped arrange in the 60s when Muhammad Ali uh, was obviously stripped of his world championships uh, and that uh, for his refusal to be drafted into the Vietnam War and that Jim Brown was such an important element in getting so many of those players together at a very important time to rally around Muhammad Ali. Among them, uh, you know, you had Bill Russell uh, that was there, a number of his teammates, including John Wooten, uh, who were there in Cleveland. A very seminal moment when it comes to the intersection of sports and culture in the 1960s. And Jim Brown was at the forefront of that and continued to be over the next several decades. And so um, certainly, again, a unicorn. I don't know that we've ever really seen anyone like him in football. In fact, I know we've never seen anyone like him in football, and we may, may never see anyone in football like him again. JJ, so many layers to Jim Brown. We've talked about on the field things, acting, civil rights, but do you have maybe a personal favorite memory or, or story that you can remember? I know you dove into a little bit with Bill Belichick, but do you have any others that come to mind? Yeah, well, you know, I just think I've been fortunate enough to cover this league now for a little more than a decade and gone to a number of NFL events. And you know when Jim Brown is in the room. You know at the Super Bowl when you uh, catch a glimpse of him or when you're at a press conference and, you know, he's uh, in, on the stage or to the side of the stage. There's a different vibe in there that you're uh, among football royalty. There's no question about it. And then I don't know if you can see, but right over my shoulder right here, it's a signed Jim Brown mini helmet. I mean, it's a, it's a very important uh, piece of memorabilia. I don't have a lot of signed memorabilia things, but when uh, this came into my possession, it was uh, no question about it. That's something that I'm going to keep uh, forever from uh, the GOAT. So uh, you're talking about football royalty. You're talking about someone who, because of what he did off of the field, along with his greatness on the field, that's why we're talking about him with such reverence today. All right, JJ, thank you so much. That is our senior NFL insider, Jonathan Jones, joining us here on HQ as we're following uh, some sad news out of the NFL where Jim Brown, one of the greatest football players in history, has died at the age of 87. 60s. Our NFL insiders, Charles Davis and Rick Spielman, joining us now to cover this news. Guys, Jim Brown, when he walked away from the field, he was in his prime, 30 years old, but at the time held league records for rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. Charles, we'll start with you. What was his impact on the game? It was more than considerable. It was overwhelming in so many different ways because he was that guy. You mentioned the re records he retired with. And you mentioned at 30, he was wanting to come back and play, contract dispute. Rick will remember this. And finally, he just said, heck with it. I'm going to go do movies. All right. He was really 29 at the time. But he walked away from it all. But averaged over five yards a carry, 5.2. You know, led the league in rushing eight of the nine seasons he, he played. The other season he didn't lead it, he finished second. He was the guy that our fathers, our grandfathers, our coaches, always pointed to and said, that's the greatest football player that ever lived. And then take it one step further. We'll probably talk about it later. 
How about his prowess on the lacrosse field? How would you like to be known, Grace and Rick, as not only the greatest in one thing, but the greatest in two things? Because Roy Simmons Sr., the great lacrosse coach at Syracuse, maintained until the day he died that Jim Brown was the greatest lacrosse player he ever saw, too. Yeah, Charles, I can tell you that I grew up in Canton, Ohio, so we were huge Cleveland Brown fans growing up at the time. And when he retired, I remember I was only three years old, but I walked in and my dad was a high school football coach for his whole career in the Canton area. And I was like, what's the matter, Dad? I thought someone passed away. And he said, Jim Brown retired. And I said, well, I know he's a big guy that runs around with a football in his hand on the field, but what does that mean? He said that not only was he the greatest running back, but the greatest football ever player to ever play the game. And you talk about his career in lacrosse. Did you know, Charles, that he used to cup, and my sons play lacrosse, so I know a little bit about lacrosse. He used to cup the ball close to his chest and they made that a Jim Brown rule that they couldn't do that anymore because he just run through people, run in and shoot a goal. But when you (laughs) classify him as a great football player, I think he was one of the greatest athletes that ever lived in during our time. And I just remember, I, I couldn't understand at the time how upset my dad was, but how that meant to our family to sit there and gather around watching Cleveland Browns on Sunday and having the ability to watch such a great player play. Well, not only was he one of the greatest two sport athletes of all time, he was a great contributor to society when he retired from football, became an actor, appearing in over 30 films, but more importantly, used his platform to become a civil rights uh, activist and helping disadvantaged youth. So Charles, how important was his impact off the field? It was it was monstrous because not only as a young African-American kid did I get to watch his games, then highlights and hear all the great stories about him as an athlete. Then I saw up close and personal him putting himself out there out front to help people who look like me. I remember that great photo and, and Rick remembers it, too, I'm sure of him. And I think Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and a number of great stars talking about a bank and where the money was going to come, economics for black people, all right, standing up and using his platform. Later in life, trying to quell gang violence, meeting with gang members and and, and the leaders of those groups and trying to work that out so that people were better in society. Listen, there was another side of Jim that's extremely complicated, all right? There's a side of him that doesn't jive with what we're talking about right now. But to what we're saying here, what he's done, what he's done for society and tried to help that way. Oh, yeah, that, that impact was, was was out there in a big, big way. And Charles, you see the activism going on now and social justice and how we need to change in this country. But you think back at that time in the 1960s and how much courage those athletes and Jim Brown had to have during that time period to stand up and say, this is not right. So as great of a player as he was on the field and as a great a lacrosse player was, I admired him from the courage that he had and all those athletes had to stand up in this country when it wasn't probably the most popular thing to do to try to make change that's so necessarily needed. Both of you obviously very involved in the NFL with your careers. I would love to hear a personal story or memory uh, that you have of Jim Brown. And Charles, you can start us off. All right, at one point I was um, working for a living before I started doing this. And (laughs) it was a golf tournament. Bryant Gumbel had his golf tournament at Disney World where I worked at the time. And I was serving as the MC starter on the first tee that day. And my little joke with each player that I would introduce would be, and this is such and such, the greatest player at his, you know, that sort of a thing. It became a joke and everyone laughed in the whole thing. And then I got to Jim Brown and it wasn't a joke anymore. Everybody kind of went, okay, you can stop doing that now. Cause that he is the absolute greatest player. And I'm going to throw in a quick bonus. Rick, did you read Ernie Acorsi's book when he talked about being with the Browns 
and they wanted to draft a quarterback the year Jim Brown came out, and all the quarterbacks went off the board the pick before their pick. And Ernie, of course, he said, Paul Brown's head hit the table, and then everyone was quiet in the room, and you could hear this disembodied voice say, well, now we have to take Jim Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, those are great stories, Charles. And I can remember just being at some events and events where Jim Brown was there. And even uh, in my role as a general manager, when I saw him, I was almost intimidated to go up and even yeah. say hello because I knew the greatness. I also knew the scour he had on his face, too. So, but that uh, just. You can feel it like, bubbling, couldn't you, Rick? When, when yeah, you were no. in Jim Brown. You can just feel it bubbling. And I always thought to myself, I am a half a sentence away from him reaching up and snatching my goozle and just ripping it right out of my throat and throwing it at my feet. I was like, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown? Spillman. Pleasure to meet you. And then scurrying away. Just so I was so intimidated. You were just like me. We did everything from a little bit of distance, right? You just wanted to have just a little bit because if those hands snatched you, it was over. But let's just be honest about the whole thing. That intimidation came from respect. That intimidation came from us watching him and realizing what we had seen and what we can still continue to watch on tape. I still think he's the greatest that's ever played. And as Rick said, not just running back, but football player. And Barry Sanders' dad would never tell him he was the greatest. He'd always say, well, son, there was Jim Brown. Barry Sanders' dad, that ought to speak volumes. That ought to speak volumes as well. Those are some great stories. Love that you guys got to experience the greatness of Jim Brown. Thank you so much for joining us, Charles Davis and Rick Spielman, as we're following the breaking news out of the NFL today. Jim Brown, one of the greatest NFL players of all time, has passed away at the age of 87. Welcome back into CBS Sports HQ. We're following that breaking news out of the NFL where Jim Brown, one of the greatest players in football history, has died at the age of 87. A truly remarkable man uh, from his days on the field at Syracuse to the Cleveland Browns, his acting career, and of course his civil rights advocacy. Here's the host of NFL Today on CBS, James Brown, on his legacy. James Nathaniel Brown, better known as Jim, was born in St. Simons, Georgia in 1936 the son of a boxer and a housekeeper. Brown went on to attend Syracuse University where he was a multi-sport phenom. He lettered in football, basketball, track, and lacrosse in which he was named first team All-America as a senior. But it was in football that Brown stood out. As a senior, he ran for 986 yards in just eight games. He capped his college career in a Cotton Bowl loss to TCU in which he totaled 132 yards rushing and three touchdowns and kicked three extra points. He was drafted sixth overall in the 1957 NFL Draft by the Cleveland Browns and put together one of the most legendary careers in NFL history. In just nine seasons, he led the NFL in rushing eight times while also carrying the Browns to the 1964 NFL Championship. The franchise hasn't won a title since. When Brown walked away from the game in 1965, he held the league records for most rushes, yards, and touchdowns, marks that stood for more than a decade after his exit. Brown walked off the field and into Hollywood, retiring while on the set of The Dirty Dozen. After much deliberation, I've come to the conclusion that I will retire from professional football this season. My original intention was to try and participate in the 1966 National Football League season, but due to circumstances, this is impossible. Thus began an acting career with more than 50 credits. Brown was outspoken on civil rights and race and became a leader in the effort to end inner city gang violence. While trying to dedicate his life to keeping young black men out of prison, Brown was often in trouble with the law himself. He was arrested numerous times on charges of violence against women from the late 1960s to the late 1990s. Jim Brown will be remembered as a complicated man who lived as full a life as any who ever stepped onto the NFL field. From Syracuse to Cleveland and Hollywood, 
Jim Brown became a towering American figure.